Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Matt. And I'm Shar. And we're geography tutors at Leeson House Field Study Centre. And today we're starting a series of videos showcasing some human geography fieldwork skills that can be done in your local area. This will be really useful for GCSE coursework and A level NEA projects. So, in this video today, we are in Boston, which is a part of the bigger town of Bournemouth. And this area is a really good case study for urban regeneration, but it could also be a good location for studying uh, changing places. And Boscombe at one point in time was one of the more popular areas probably in the southwest of England for, for holiday goers and for tourists. Okay? And the reason for that is because it's got natural sandy beaches, it's a much sunnier location than other parts of the country, and it's got good transport linkages to other big cities like London and Birmingham. So Boscombe was probably in its heyday in the 1920s and 1930s and that's probably when most tourists were sort of coming to this area. Unfortunately after the Second World War, um, along with other sort of coastal seaside resorts with the birth of cheap air travel, tourist numbers started decreasing and unlike its sort of neighbour Bournemouth, eh, Boscombe couldn't sustain this sort of decline in, in tourist numbers and a lot of the hotels and B&Bs and other accommodation in this area um, all shut up shop and closed down. And a lot of these houses, a lot of these buildings were then turned into housing. Um, some of them converted very well um, and were quite good quality. But unfortunately, a lot of them were turned into uh, houses of multiple occupancy. Okay, and this sort of, sort of decline in the area. Another problem in the area was a changing demographic. And this changing demographic suddenly meant that over the 1970s and 1980s, Boston got a bit of a reputation for having a um, high uh, substance abuse, drugs and alcohol, and also had uh, a reputation for having high crime rates, and just uh, people in the area were supposed to supposedly have a, a bad level of health. So in the last census, some areas of Boston were ranked as some of the most deprived areas, not only in the southwest of England, but the whole of the UK. And what's been happening over the last couple of decades is that tens of millions of pounds have been spent in different areas of Boscombe to try and improve people's quality of life, resident standard of living, and also to bring tourists back into the area. So regeneration in Boscombe is now focused on three separate areas. The seafront, where we are now, the town centre, and the residential area. And what we're going to start to do now is talk a little bit about the regeneration uh, that's been done down here at the seafront. Before the regeneration could start, money had to be raised for the different projects that were going to be implemented. So some of the money came from Bournemouth Town Council itself, but the majority of the money came from the sale of a car park just behind me. Okay? The car park was sold to a construction development company and the Honeycomb Flats have now been built on top of it. But the sale of that car park, because of the location of where it was, was worth quite a bit of money. So with the town council, with the money from the car park joined together, the council then had a good sort of piggy bank of money really to then spend on the different regeneration projects. So when tourism started declining in the 60s and 70s around the country, different coastal seaside resorts had to then carve out their own niche to attract tourists back to make them slightly different to other coastal resorts around the country. And Boscombe decided that its particular niche was going to be surfing. And on a normal day, the surfing here can be quite good. But to try and compete with the likes of Devon and Cornwall, further down the southwest, for this world class surfing, Boston decided to implement an artificial surf reef, which is behind me. And the idea behind the surf reef is that it's created a, a shallower section of seabed so that when the waves come off the English Channel and, and off the Atlantic, it hits this area of shallower seabed and the wave gets bigger. And the surfing industry is a really important industry, it's worth a lot of money. And Boston decided that. If it could get the surfers and tourists to come back to this area, then money would be injected back into the area. The long building behind me, the Overstrand building, also needed money spent on it. And the top two layers of beach pods were redeveloped, and along the bottom tier of the Overstrand building, a coast guard was put in, a few cafes and restaurants, and some surfing clothing shops and surf pie shops as well. A bit more recently, the seafront area has been rebranded as a coastal activity park and there are lots of smaller activities uh, that tourists can do when they're down here. For example, they have a mini golf course on the pier alongside musical equipment. On the beach itself, there are some cyclone posts. On the other side of the pier, there are some boulders for people to go bouldering on. And there's also some gym equipment, some table tennis tables, volleyball nets, and swing ball. So a really useful method for testing to see how effective or how successful different regeneration has been is to do a questionnaire. 
and these questionnaires could either be done on residents who may have lived in an area before the regeneration has taken place, after the regeneration has taken place as well, or it could also be done on visitors to the area as well. So things to bear in mind when you're collecting questionnaires is that you want to have a mixture of open questions and closed questions. You want to be maybe taking quantitative data and qualitative data. You're going to want to have a random sample of people, a mixture of ages, you want a mixture of genders, maybe a mixture of ethnicities, a mixture of residents, maybe a mixture of um, visitors as well. And you're going to want to make sure you've got a decent sample size as well. If you don't have a big enough sample size, then your data won't be reliable enough, won't be accurate enough, and in some cases for some statistical tests, you won't be able to analyse it in much detail either. And sometimes you might also want to come up with a strategy as well. What time of year or what time of day or what time of week are you going to go and collect that information? Is there weather conditions that might be better uh, for taking questionnaires in as well? Because all that will depend on, on how many people are in a certain area. So we've now come towards the town centre and we're going to look at how uh, the regeneration projects here have tried to attract shoppers back to the retail district. Most of the regeneration projects in the town centre have been undertaken by the Boscombe Regeneration Partnership and this group are a key group of organisations in the area, key stakeholders who are working together in a partnership approach to try and make the area a better place to live. And the six areas they're concentrated on are crime, housing, people's health, young people, the economy and the environment. One way that they've tried to make Boscombe High Street a lot more attractive is to create something called a shared space scheme. There are a number of these shared space schemes and one of them is behind me. What they've done in this area is they've removed a lot of street furniture such as fencing and signs and traffic lights and they've opened the area up uh, a lot as well. And they've increased the width of pavements to make it easier access for pedestrians and they've tried to slow the traffic speeds down as well just to make the environment a lot nicer to be in. One way that you could do some primary data collection and some field work on things like shared space schemes to see if they've been effective is to use before and after photos and use something called a perception survey. So if you had a photo of this shared space scheme before it was put in place with all the street furniture and then had a photo of what it looks like now, you could then ask residents or visitors if they think the area looks better beforehand or as it does now and then you can do some nice data analysis on that information. We come into the Royal Arcade now to have a little talk about retail and the you can do on looking at shops in there. And one way of looking at retail is to think about uh, high order shops and low order shops. And if you did a tally of how many high order shops and low order shops are in different areas, that might then link into what regeneration has been done to an area. Now those definitions, a high order and a low order shop, need a bit of explaining. So a high order shop is a shop that you are willing to travel a long distance to get to, or willing to spend a lot of money in it. So it might be, for example, a big um, high chain retail area like a Debenhams or a John Lewis. It might be a slightly more specialised estate agent, or it might be something like a big phone shop. Whereas a low order shop is something that you're not really willing to travel a long distance to get to, something like a charity shop or a pawnbroker's or a betting shop, something you're not going to want to spend a huge amount of money in. So when looking at high order and low order shops, what could you look at? Well, you could look at how um, different areas from in your study location have high order shops and low order shops. You could maybe compare two different study locations, or you could maybe, again, use past photographs, compare how the areas changed over time. Has an area developed more high order shops over time, or has there been more low order shops coming into the area? A really interesting study that came out towards the end of 2018 was something called a Health of the High Street. Now this was done by the Royal Society for Public Health and it looked at how you can look at different outlets, different businesses on a high street, give them different scores depending on how healthy they are and then you can get an overall score for how healthy your high street might be. Now this might be that you can then again compare between different areas of a regeneration um, section and an area that hasn't been regenerated and you can also look at different areas of the same town, you can compare towns, or you can look at how things have changed over time. By walking around your study area and tallying down the number of these different retail outlets, you can then use the formula to work out a total health score for your high street. So remember, whenever you're doing some primary data collection, be aware of your sample size. The more data you collect, the more accurate your analysis will become. Have a little think about your sampling strategy. Does it want to be random? Does it want to be stratified? Does it want to be systematic? 
and also have a think about what other limitations there might be for your methods.